today's video. It's all about making another surface plate from this pattern. Now I need three of them. If you scrape them in, you need three of them to get a really flat surface. But also I'm going to try and correct some of the defects from the last casting which is still usable. So what happened with this one? It's got fairly deep shrink marks in there which means that I've got a machine so much more metal which is unnecessary but I can still use it because I need three of them. So what I'll do, I'll try a little method and you'll see it in the next clips how I'm going to try and solve this problem. This is my favourite tool for the lathe. It's an expendable faceplate. It's 200 millimetres in diameter and I cast them in cast iron. And what the idea is you can machine them as much as you want. You can drill as many holes as you want. And when it looks like Swiss cheese, you just throw them out and cast another one. And the perfect way to hold this, because I've got to machine this and make a cone out of it, and it's got to be a sharp edge just along that edge there. So we've got a taper on there now. So it's about three and a half degrees a little bit of an edge there, I'd like to take more but I've got a bit of a problem don't like to do this on camera but some of these I've put just too much super glue on and it's very thin there and we'll see if we can break it or get it off in one piece no Well, that turned out as rough as just too much super glue on there. Here is the cone. It's on the pattern. I've marked the circle with a pencil. It's pretty rough, but looks don't matter. All the cracks that I put in there, I just glued them up again, and it'll work quite well. So what it does it usually dishes in like that so what I'm doing is putting a dish the other way to try and counteract that shrinkage and we'll try it next time we'll see how it works so here we go this is our strange little riser it's a bit of a cone we'll see if it'll fix that problem just goes in like so and then when I remove the top box this should just drop out easy So there we go, don't need to wrap it, just fell out. Plenty of draft.
This is the second disc brake rotor melt and we'll see how good the wedge test is. This is the fracture from that test. You can just see some white cast iron mixed with grey cast iron, it's called mottled iron and I cut back a bit on the ferrosilicon, maybe I cut back just a little bit too much, I might have to go back the original mount but being a thick casting, the surface plate it probably won't matter too much at all the casting has been cleaned up and we'll have a closer look at it so I'll put a ruler across here you can see it's raised in the centre exactly what I wanted whereas before it was dished so we'll have another look at the casting and we can see right bring the camera down a bit what happened here I rammed it too softly and it went around my finger and touched just there to feel how hard I'd rammed it and it made a little bit of a spot where the metal could leak I should have filled it up full of sand but I didn't bother so I thought right we'll just clamp it down harder with the clamps and you can see what happened it leaked all the way along here and it could have leaked out completely but with the clamps it saved the day and the wood burnt and it protected it so it didn't come out and the other thing, you have a look at that, these little um, dams, what I like to call them, protectors, if you splash here, they won't go down into the riser. They work really well. So I've cast up two surface plates, and one was the lathe bed, this one was the disc brake rotor, like here. So I'll machine them up in a future video, and we'll see how they turn out. But what the next video will be all about is the disc brake rotor again, but these castings will range from simple castings to a bit more complex, thick and thin. You've got to experiment, see exactly what happens. And I'll know for the next time when I use a disc brake rotor to cure some of the problems if they turn up.